I do have a, a, a couple wonderful associate directors. We're going to be hearing from both of them tonight. But one of those associate directors who is a mainstay of the Institute, who really is a kind of a guiding light, a rock, and, and also uh, just a re real, real central vision for us, uh, is Keith Salsenbach. And I have to say, I hate you all because <laughs> Keith has been so concerned that this is a perfect evening for you, that this is really a great, fantastic kickoff. I mean, he really has poured his heart and soul into this, and I think he succeeded. Let's just give him a round. And now I want to get him back, so that help helping me out. But but you should be very proud, Keith. This is fantastic. Keith, of course, gave me my talking points so that I wouldn't screw this up. He's a very nice guy that he is. Um, so so welcome, and this is really the. Uh, 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 it's taking two organizations that have existed in the past, the uh, ESNE, which has a, a, uh, a long and distinguished record back, back to Nobel laureate, of course, uh, Libby, Professor Libby, who, who was, was uh, fundamental in founding this. And I think one of the people here that was, he is here tonight that was there at the foundation of this is Malcolm Gordon. Malcolm, you want to give a wave out there? UCLA. I think there's a, a picture like Dorian Gray someplace in the house. It's just, it's just amazing. But but uh, Malcolm also, by the way, uh, was one of the founders and uh, the chair of the committee that was wrote the founding document to, to found the uh, the IOES program. So I mean, we really owe Malcolm an awful lot here. Really, really uh, important, and it's just a pleasure to see you here tonight, Malcolm. And uh, I, I also want to say to you. Uh, out there, the ESNE graduates, alumni, the current graduate students, the supporters, that, that we will be a good home for, uh, for the ESNE program and that we have a lot of faculty, we have a lot of members of uh, the IOES who are delighted by this, who are excited, who just, uh, you know, this is, this is so important to us. And, uh, and I would like the, uh, our, our cross-appointed faculty, our core <coughs> faculty, our center directors, the IOES people who could make it tonight, just please, just, just, just <coughs> wave your arms so we can see that there we are, okay? <laughs> so, so folks, you don't have to depend on me. The ESNE program is in good hands with my colleagues. I can tell you they are just quality people and, and I am very, very proud to be, to be the director of the Institute with such people in it. I also then uh, I want to say that uh, there is a dean here who was very, dean emeritus, who was very, very important uh, in, in preserving and, and keeping the ESNE program going and alive, and that's Dean Fifi. Dean Fifi, can you just... Now, if I were to sit back today, knowing what I know, and I were to create a doctoral program that fit the IOES, the Institute of Environment and Sustainability here at UCLA, ESNE would be the doctoral program that I would create. A program that is rigorous, it's tough, it gets the students interacting with the faculty, but also with each other. And most importantly, it gives them then practical experience working in the outside world, taking what we can train them here at UCLA from the theoretical, the laboratory, the field basis as academics, but then applying that in real world situations. And, and having a multidisciplinary program where the students are interacting, not just all with engineers, but with engineers, with economists, with biologists, with social scientists. That's the way we're going to solve the world's problems in the future, and the ESNE program does it. And what amazes me is that Libby and people like Malcolm, way back in, in the, the dawn of this program, they thought of something that today would be novel, today would be exciting, today would be transformational, and yet it's a program that's existed since about 1970, which is incredible. The IOES was created on the campus to do a similar thing for our research, for outreach from UCLA, and for undergraduate education and graduate education. 
the, uh, our undergraduate program draws, we have a Bachelor of Science in Environmental Science, draws very heavily from the experience that you all gleaned with the ESE program. And it tur turns out students who are well trained in the sciences will have to then extend into economics and, and business and management with wonderful faculty from all those fields that are in the IOES. And then they have to do practical uh, applied research for a client, firm, or government agency. If I were to design then, looking at the IOES, multidisciplinary, uh, focused on results, focused on the real world, focused on extending UCLA uh, to on-the-ground participation with firms, with government agencies, with NGOs, I would have designed the s &E program. And I just feel, and as I saw everyone coming in today and, and look at you all today, I feel that we are tremendously gifted that this program has come to us. It has come to us not just as a program, it's come to us as people. It's come to us as students, it's come to us as alumni, it's come to us as experience in this. This is a kind of a dream thing, you know, I have to pinch myself, right? Here we are, a fairly young institute, and yet we have an unbelievably distinguished graduate alumni now, and that is wonderful. All I can say about that then, is we will do our best to honor you. We will do our present students, our alumni, and all of our supporters. We will do our best not just to maintain this ESNE doctrine, but to grow it and to see it thrive. You've put your faith in us, and I want to thank you. Many of you got together and have been pounding on the university's doors for this to happen. And, and it did happen. And your voices were heard. I can tell you, having talked to the top levels of Murphy Hall, our administration, not only were your voices were heard, but you absolutely impressed our administration. They were so impressed by what you've all achieved in your careers. They were so impressed by your dedication to UCLA and your program. And frankly, they are trying to take a page from that book and extend it to other programs on campus because ESNE has been exceptional. So I thank you for that, and I pledge, I pledge that we will work our very best to support the faith that you have put in us. And I know we will achieve it. Now, we are going to achieve it as a partnership, though. As you know, Jerry Brown isn't writing checks to us right now, right? <laughs> okay? However, however, the Institute has, over the last few years, grown and thrived. We are very entrepreneurial. We're very outward-looking. We have great friends to work with and help us with placing our students in internship to help us with the support we need. So I can make the promise that ESNE is going to thrive and grow, not just because of us in the IOES, but really I can make that promise with some solid, solid belief and assurance because I know all of you are going to be our partners in this. And together, we are going to have something that you can be proud of and that, and that we will see flourish and grow and really provide the leadership that's needed uh, in the 21st century in environment sustainability. Thank you all for coming tonight. Thank you so much, Glenn. Uh, our next speaker is no stranger to many of you. He came to UCLA in the mid-1970s and immediately became involved in the ESE program, well before it found a home in the School of Public Health. There is no doubt that aside from what we call the ESE core faculty, who were all in the School of Public Health, he has been the faculty member most involved with the program over the years, recently serving as director uh, during the last academic year. It's my pleasure to introduce Professor Michael Spencer. Thank you very much. The first thing I would like to say is I'm really having a good time tonight. <laughs> and I hope all of you are too, because it is so wonderful to see so many familiar faces and to see what this little bit of education that UCLA provided to you was able to do for you in your careers, because it seems to me like everybody's turned out pretty well. And so I'm very happy about that. So I came here in 1977 and I taught my first class, which was 184D back then. I'm sure none of you remember any numbers. <laughs> but I had six ESNE students in that class, and none of them are here tonight, but that was Pam Painter, we, Jeff Daniels, Kathy Fitzgerald, Paul Smokler, Suzanne Finney, and Francis Palmer. 
and they've gone, all gone on to what I think is distinguished careers. And I learned much to my uh, trouble that some of my students are now grandparents. <laughs> and so it's a little hard for I mean, I'm, I'm a parent, I have a six-year-old daughter. And uh, she keeps me young, at least I hope she does. But to learn that my former students are now grandparents is, uh, well, it's just a, another tribute to their success. <laughs> so I would like to applaud the ESV students over the years because they've been a lot of fun in my classes. And I've had uh, more of them and lesser of them at different times, but it's always been a lot of fun. And so I also had, as long as we're talking about very senior, we don't say old anymore, we say senior. <laughs> Uh, senior graduates, uh, I can talk about Jean Leon, and he was the very first ESD graduate. I've lost track with him. Uh, I did invite him to the meeting tonight, but I, I didn't get a reply. But he was the director of the Association of Bay Area Governments in San Francisco, or the East Bay. And uh, he had a long and distinguished career there that was marked with environmental progress and lots of good things from a government agency. And so he is an example for me of how this education that we've been providing uh, can work to the benefit of everybody. And uh, he was instrumental in bringing stormwater controls to uh, the Bay Area and trying to create a consensus between those that have to pay the bills and those that want to improve environmental quality and, and the, the various groups that are involved. So I'm really happy with the success of es and &E students. And I frequently tell this story um, about attending some meetings at the regional board where there were, we were discussing something to do with a permit and what the permit should be and so forth. And I'm, I'm always uh, amazed to see that there was an es and &E graduate who was employed by the permittee. There was an es &E graduate employed by the regulatory agency. And there was an es &E graduate employed by the NGO that was getting involved with uh, the permit negotiations. So it was like a class reunion of <laughs> these students trying to solve a problem. And uh, that's one of the things I, be I began to realize after I came to California. When I came to California, I, I mean, I came from South Carolina where things are quite different. I mean, Strom Thurmond was a, a senator from South Carolina when I left South Carolina in a very different place than California. But one thing I learned in California is that in these environmental problems we're trying to solve, that the technology is never the limiting step. It's always some issue with people or, or institutional barriers or society or something. And that we uh, engineers, we died in the wool engineers, weren't well equipped to solve that problem. And I wasn't going to solve that problem in civil engineering because we're civil engineering. But it was a good opportunity for us to create uh, the discipline of environmental science and engineering, which included policy. And when we moved to public health from the, the physical sciences division, we wrote a white paper. Malcolm Gordon, who is the only person I think in this room that is senior to me <laughs> with respect to es &E. Maybe there's somebody else. I mean, Bart Sokolow is senior to me. Where's Bart? Where are you? <laughs> we don't say old anymore. We say senior. I want to say something about the graduates in a minute. But we wrote this white paper, and we decided that of the three and a half positions that were going to be created in the School of Public Health for es &E, that one of them should address these policy issues. And I believe that has continued and uh, grows in importance, and we're hoping to continue that. And I think the move to the IOES will help us in that regard. I mean, many of you out there have asked me questions tonight about what this move really means, and is it really good, and so forth and so on. And let me say that moving to the IOES, I think, is the very best thing that's happened to es &E in the last 15 or so years. And it's also the very best thing that's happened to the IOES as well. So I think it is a, it's a mutually beneficial sort of thing for all of us. And I believe it, it uh, is the culmination of the ability to marry very technical issues that we engineers and we physical scientists and life scientists uh, uh, worry about with the economics and the policy and the institutional issues 
that so often control what we do. So I believe it is exactly where we want to be, and uh, I'm very happy for it. And I think this uh, this evening marks that uh, uh, really the beginning of this new transition. By the way, it's also our 40th anniversary. We didn't think about it. Twenty years ago, we had our 20th anniversary at this faculty center, and some of the pictures that you may have seen are from that 20th anniversary. <laughs> so, 40 years, wow. Uh, and I hope that you saw the pictures of Bill Libby. Um, Bill Libby was the carbon-14 Nobel laureate that joined UCLA in, I think, 1960, just before he won the prize. And uh, I had the good fortune to be on some committees with him with graduate students. And uh, I got to know him. And uh, even at the end of his life, you could see the sparkle of his intelligence coming through. Because he told me in one committee meeting, the student was out of the room, of course, uh, uh, for an exam, that how he thought about carbon-14 dating. He sort of looked up at the ceiling and he thought about those cosmic neutrons coming from the sun uh, creating carbon-14 and how it could be used for dating. Because and so that was a really interesting experience for me, and I really appreciate that uh, that little snippet of time with him that I got to, got to see. The meeting went on, and he said, well, what can I ask the student? And I said, well, I just lectured on chlorine chemistry for the student, and the breakpoint reactions and so forth. So you could ask the student about breakpoint chlorination chemistry, and he said, oh, that's great. I know something about chlorine chemistry, because he was a chemist. And of course, he asked the student who knew nothing. <laughs> I was totally dumbfounded after that. You know, with my tail between my legs, we signed the pass. On that. <laughs> but you know, that student is not here tonight. <laughs> so, anyway, let me, uh, let me say that uh, the ISNI graduates have accomplished a lot. And I want to mention a few people here. I've talked about Lou Libby, and I hope you see the pictures. But Dick Perrine is not here tonight. And he was director for the longest time, um, about 15 years, I think. And it was a love-hate relationship with Dick. I'm quite sure the program would not exist without Dick Perrine's contributions. And uh, for those of you that know him, uh, know him, I emailed with him recently, and he is alive and well, a little less um, uh, sparky or funky than he used to be. Um, but he's alive and well and aware of environmental issues, living out uh, the 101 freeway towards, um, towards Simi Valley. And so he was our director for quite some number of years, right before we went to public health. And then we had a transition period between uh, the School of Physical Sciences, or the Division of Physical Sciences and Public Health. And that's when people like Malcolm Gordon was chair of our advisory committee, Morton Worley, who I haven't spoken to in a long time, was instrumental in helping us. He was an atmospheric scientist. And Bob Lindbergh, who was a um, non-tenure track faculty who most of you from the early days will remember, was also very helpful. That transition resulted in the hiring of Bill Glaze. And Bill Glaze was with us for a while. He's retired from the University of North Carolina. He was our director for a while, and he was instrumental in helping certain aspects of the program improve. Some of you students may remember the term that I learned called getting glazed. <laughs> Asking a dumb question in a class. I see some nodding heads back there. So, uh, and then during the transition period after Bill left, and we suffered through a, um, a rather uh, discouraging academic senate review, I was director. And uh, I'd like to especially thank Dean Afifi. Where are you, Dean? Dean Afifi, he's over here. He was really helpful to us in making that transition. And Vice Chancellor Andrea Rich was also helpful. And let me say, I said this to Dean Afifi earlier, that we didn't know how good a dean he was until later. <laughs> So then we hired Arthur Weiner, who's in the audience, and I think all of you uh, know of Arthur Weiner's tenure as director, and we have pictures of the Friars Club party where we honored him, and now we have uh, the last emeritus director 
Richard Ambrose, who we're going to talk about a little bit more in a, in a bit, but he's over here. And if you see the pictures, he's the one in the scuba outfit underneath the water. <laughs> so, and I've been happy to direct the program for the last year, and now Keith Solsenbach <coughs> is, um, I was chair of civil engineering for eight years, and he was my best hire when I was chair of civil engineering, Keith Stolzenbach, to the civil engineering department. He has assumed the leadership in a lot of the management of this, uh, of this activity tonight, and I'm really happy that he's been willing to do this. And it's an unpaid job, by the way. So it's all uh, magnanimous on his part. So, and the next person I'd like to recognize is Madeline Gleckfeld. Where are you, Madeline? She, she left. Oh, she left. Okay, well, shucks. I mean, I should have spoken her first. But she's been really helpful in, in all of these negotiations and stuff, and hooking us up between techn technological things and policy sorts of things and regulatory activities. <coughs> so let me briefly mention some of the faculty that uh, we've had over the years. Bart Sokolow, who's probably our most senior graduate here tonight in attendance, uh, was a faculty member for quite some number of years and five students. Bill Vicillo, who I've lost touch with. Laura Lake, who still lives here on the west side. Bob Lindbergh. Has anybody heard from Bob Lindbergh? I haven't heard from Bob. There's some pictures of him. But a very instrumental person in our, our, um, our history. Paul Merrifield, David Bradford, Diane Perry, Doug McKay, who I now think is up at uh, UC Davis doing some work. Don Duke, who's in Florida. Linwood Pendleton, who's in North Carolina at Duke, and Paul Rosenfeld. Are you here tonight, Paul Rosenfeld? He was our intern advisor for a while. Um, and so uh, those folks have helped us over the years. In, uh, and I hope I haven't left anybody out, but maybe I have. Uh, and if I have, I apologize to you. So um, that's kind of what I wanted to say. And I'm very pleased to see everybody tonight. And I hope you have a lot of fun. And the pictures, are, there's 300 some pictures that we assembled. Thank you for sending them to me, those of you who did. And uh, they'll be posted. Uh, Myrna Gordon, where's Myrna, where are you? continuing, she's moving to the IOES, so she's a familiar face, and she's going to continue to help us. So thank you very much, Myrna, and I give the program back to Keith. Right. It's the uh, time in the program where we want to pay a tribute to Rich Ambrose's years as service as the ESC director. And we thought the best way to do that, and I know as a faculty member this would be the way I would like to have it done for me, uh, would be to have his students come and talk to you rather than to hear more from faculty. As much as we <coughs> respect the, the work he did as, as our colleague, uh, we think the students can uh, you know, give, you, give you the real sense of what, he, what he's meant. So uh, we have three students at least that are going to come up and talk. Uh, Felicia, uh, Alicia and Marcus and and uh, and Leda Yoon and um, Shelley Luce. That's it. The three of you, right? Okay. Alicia, I'm sorry, Frederick. Alicia Frederick. Yes, I can. I'm Shelley Luce, and um, I graduated in 2003, I think. <laughs> and um, Dr. Ambrose, as I called him for at least the first five years that I knew him, was my supervisor for my dissertation. And um, I'm really, really honored to be asked to talk about Rich tonight um, because he was obviously extremely important in my work at UCLA and he continues to be extremely important in my work personally in improving the environment and the world around us in LA and Southern California 
and I know uh, many others of you here work with him as well. So I wanted to talk, to talk a little bit about that. Um, beginning with um, my, my beginning at UCLA, I was not recruited by Rich Ambrose, I was kind of recruited by Dr. Weiner and Dr. Suffet, and the first time I met Rich Ambrose, I thought, huh, not very friendly. <laughs> Obviously, we, I wouldn't say that today, but at the time, it was the students just um, had a lot of students, I think. And now, I, I realize how many students that you've actually, um, that, have, that you've supervised over the years. So now I know Rich as an incredibly supportive teacher and mentor and colleague and friend, and I know that so many of, of you do as well. Right now, I think Rich is serving on about three technical advisory committees that I'm involved with. That's just today. A couple ended probably recently, and a few more are going to start very soon. So if you're involved with a TAC, a SAP, a SAC, a SAT, or a, anything else that sounds like that, has the words science advisory or technical advisory in it, and it's related to the marine environment or the coastal environment in any way, Rich Ambrose is probably involved. The ones that I know of recently include the Songs Mitigation, the Malibu Lagoon design, the Legacy Park design, which was really innovative and groundbreaking, um, the Biona Wetland Science Advisory Committee, the Marine Life Protection Act Science Advisory Team. None of these things were easy projects to be involved with, and all of them required a huge amount of time and personal dedication from Rich and the others involved. And I think that Rich is such a great example for us in the ESE program, although I don't believe that your academic, your education and academic training were necessarily interdisciplinary from the beginning. Rich's career is interdisciplinary, and he is such an example for us of how he can use his excellent top-notch science and research and use it to help decision-making, to shape policy on really important issues in Southern California and nationwide now. I think you're working with the Army Corps of Engineers telling the generals what to do, which is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, and for me personally, it's really helped me so much and in so many ways to have Rich on my team. Not that he was on my team personally, but that we were on the side of good science and that we were going to see various processes through with good science, regardless of who attacked our work or our, our motivations or morals or whatever people come up with. And many of you have been through these kinds of things where you're saying something that a bunch of people, maybe powerful people, don't like. So they're going to try to tear you to pieces or your work. And it's really great for me when I have someone like Rich Ambrose when I know I'm on that team because I know that Rich is coming from a place of really good science and that he's able to apply that to decision making to make the world a better place by the time we're done our work. So I want to present this um, photograph to you, Rich. This is a beautiful photo of a kelp fish. <laughs> <laughs> and, it was <laughs> and it was actually, this photo was taken off the coast of, Cali or of Anacapa Island, where I know you have spent a great deal of time doing um, underwater research. The reference to Rich in a wetsuit and underwater has something to do with the week or two every year that you dedicate to this place, as well as a lot of your other research. So will you please come up and accept this photo? Thank you. Thank you, but 
One thing really stick with me about uh, rich and poor. While we were in school, we worked pretty hard. So we spent quite long hours every day in school, but not as much as he did. And he worked pretty crazy hours. And it's for his, for, of course, for his student, but, but also for um, program. And while I was in school, the public health school was, in, I mean, lots of things are going on. So we kind of heard about lots of rumors as a you know, brand new student. You know, we feel a little bit uncomfortable, but you know, he was there as a director. He, he was firm and always assuring, with, you know, with, with other professors too. Yes, I really appreciate he's been there. You know, he was there for us as a director, and he's been, you know, he's been, he's been sacrificing, you know, his own private hours, and I, I guess thanks to his family too, to, to for us to see this you know, great outcome today. And most of all, I was sure about you know what I'm doing, what I'm going to do I was in school, but whenever you know, I came to talk to him about my project, the problem courses, later my dissertation project, he was always like, so let me hear about what you were thinking. You know? He was always like, as if he was seeing the best science, best, most, you know, the most amazing story. Like, he was all, you know, there just focusing at you, really listening to you, you know, really believing you. And, you know, his gaze, like, he doesn't blink his eyes. He's really assuring you that you can do it, you can really make it do this. So I really appreciate it, and I'm, I really appreciate you really believing me, and I, I, I really thank you. <laughs> this is something I learned that he is, you know, one of the favorite hobby pastimes in his life, so it's something I'm going to relate to. So it's from, you know, all of us. to a, some IOES event here, as a matter of fact. And we met, uh, I approached him because I knew he was the ESC director, um, and I was thinking of joining the ESC program or applying, and we talked outside, I think, on the, on the patio here. It's the first time I met you. Uh, and I was just, I had, I had done engineering as my undergraduate and worked for a long time in, in various industries, and I really wanted to um, go back to school and really understand the policy and the science behind the environmental regulations. And so I approached Rich, and it was just as Veda said, he's 100% of his attention was on me. And, it's, and that was really unusual, because I'm used to, you know, a lot of times you approach a, a professor, especially when you're not even at the school yet, and you can see they're talking to you, but in the meantime, they're like checking out the crowd to see who else they might want to talk to, who's <laughs> interesting, you know. And you're kind of feeling, you know, a little awkward, and you, you know, but not rich. It's a hundred percent. What do you want? To, and he talked to me for a long time, and, and afterwards, I was like, yes, that this is the program for me. It's perfect. Um, and so then, throughout my whole time in the ESE program, he was like that. I mean, he was the busiest person I knew, and yet he still was able to find time to respond to me, to meet with me, um, and to, you know, to review my, my drafts, um, and to really provide me just wonderful guidance. Uh, and so I want to thank you, Rich, for all of that. And um, we have one more item that's related to biking for you, and um, it's a gift certificate. 
and I'm just going to read out the inscription on it. You'll get it by email, so, so I, had to, I had to create a sort of a fake copy of it. So it's, um, it's a gift card from Competitive Cyclist, and the message says, it's from the ESC alumni, and it says, the ESC alumni thank you deeply for all of your guidance, wisdom, and kindness, and for the personal sacrifices you made during your tenure as director. We hope this small token of our appreciation helps you to better enjoy the free time that you now, hopefully, have more of. <laughs> so. Thanks very much for all those kind words. Uh, really, it's been an honor for me to be part of the ESE family for so long. Um, I mean, this this is what attracted me to, to UCLA. Um, you guys really are amazing. Uh, it's been great to work with all the students, the alumni, the staff, the faculty, um, all the supporters of the program. Several people have already talked about you know what an amazing group you are, and you really are. And uh, and I appreciate the opportunity to work with you. Um, I do want to thank a few people. First and foremost, I need to thank my family, Bobette, my wife, and my kids. <laughs> and for all their support and for putting up with all the hours I was spending at UCLA while my kids were growing up. Um, I also wanted to thank uh, Mel Suffet and Arthur Weiner, the the faculty formerly known as the core faculty, we're not using that anymore. We were all hired about 20 years ago, and actually Mike told a bit of the story behind that. Um, Mike and uh, Malcolm were working on this white paper that uh, led to a fee fee providing the, the resources and implementing our hiring. We really appreciate the, all the support Fifi has given us over the years. It has really been remarkable um, and well put about um, how much more we appreciate it now. Um, <laughs> when I first came to UCLA, the interesting thing is Mel, and he remembers this, I know, one of the first things he said to me is, now we're married. <laughs> what I thought of her. <laughs> but, but it's true. He must be a bigamist. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he's he's non-discriminatory about this. But, you know, it's true. Here we are 20 years later. Uh, and so really, I think of this, this is like a, a 20th anniversary party. <laughs> I have to thank Myrna in the back there. Um, we've already talked about this. Certainly, I couldn't have done my job without her. Um, so, uh, you all have heard a bit about the history of the ESC program and uh, various phases we've gone through. And so, we're definitely entering a new chapter right now, uh, being coming part of the Institute of Environment and Sustainability. And um, you also have heard, and I, but I totally agree, this is just a perfect home for ESC. Um, the the interdisciplinary approach to environmental issues and um, sort of the central uh, role that IOES plays on campus for the environment means that it's a great home for us now and into the future. And um, we're lucky with the support we're getting from Glenn McDonald, you heard him speak earlier, and um, Glenn's just been fantastic all the way through this, and I know that he's really going to 
um, value ESC in the Institute and continue to support it. And we're lucky to have two of our own alumni already working in the Institute, um, Mark Gold, I don't know where Mark is, he was back there, there he is, and, uh, and Felicia Federico, and so that's useful for us too. And so I think ESC really has a bright future now, and I don't know that I'm going to be here in 20 years to see where we are, but I'm certainly looking forward to working with all of you um, to make sure that uh, ESC is, is successful in the Institute. So thanks very much. Final speaker um, perfectly represents this new union between the ESC and the IOES. He's a, an ESC alum, and earlier this year, after a long career as a leader of Field Bay, he joined us, uh, joined the IOES as associate director and as an adjunct professor, working both on development and on fostering the IOES Coastal Center. Most of you know that I'm talking about Professor Dr. Mark Cole. <laughs> Everybody's been thanked, I think, um, individually, so I, I guess I don't have to do too much of that. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm thrilled to see such an amazing turnout tonight. Um, just, I mean, many of you guys I haven't seen in years, and, and so many new faces here as well. For all of us, the ESC doctor program has changed our lives in so many ways. For me personally, importantly, I met my beautiful wife, Lizette, through the program. I don't know how many other marriages were set up that way. Um, as an example of how the ESC doctoral program has made a difference, um, the program trained me um, to work effectively on water quality and coastal protection issues, and Lizette to help Santa Monica in their efforts to restore Santa Monica's local water supply. Other ESC grads and faculty have led efforts to save lives from air toxics exposure, and reduce the incidence of asthma through cleaning up our air um, through the AQMD and ARB, as well as through research. Um, and they've helped restore local wetlands, created the first network of marine protected areas in the nation, led California's ef um, efforts to reduce stormwater pollution, protect tens of thousands of acres of wetlands and other waters of the United States, clean up water supplies across the nation, teach thousands of students um, to become effective environmental professionals and people who have greened dozens of industries and even more individual projects. So everybody, you should give yourself a hand because we've made a hell of a lot of difference over the last 40 years. The doctoral program has made a huge difference in both our professional and per per uh, personal lives and for environmental and public health protection. And finally, the ESC program has a home that we can all be proud of and that we can all support. So thank you for celebrating that here tonight. The ESC program belongs in the IOES, and with the leadership of Keith and Glenn and the continued support from Rich and Mel um, and Malcolm and so many others, um, Mike Stenstrom, uh, it's, the future looks incredibly bright. And I wanted to bring out just one thing in particular because he is so unhung unsung for all the incredible work that he's done. Keith Stoltenbach, no way this move happens without the work that he's done. Thank you so much. <laughs> However, we're going to need to build the alumni base to really build the ESC program to the stature it deserves and that the environment needs. Look at the presidential debates. Not one single mention of the environment. Clearly, environmental leaders are needed now more than ever, and the ESNE program creates the environmental leaders we need. But if you're like me, you probably drifted away from the ESC program over the years, and you may have neglected supporting the program as well, especially with all the program's uncertainty over the last few years. I'm here to tell you that we need to change that dynamic, and we need to change it dramatically. We need to build the alumni network and get everybody involved in the following ways. Number one, we need better connections between our alumni. This could help in performing better in environmental protection efforts and to help out our fellow graduates. We need to network a hell of a lot more than once every 10 years or whatever this is here tonight. 
Number two, we need to take responsibility to help place our doctoral students. Some of the best employees I ever worked with at Heal the Bay, Shelley Luce, Mitzi Taggart, and Craig Schumann, were ESNE doctoral students or ESNE grads. We all need to play a much greater role in placing the upcoming students and getting them the dissertation experiences they need. Number three, we need resources for our problems courses. We all know this has been a challenge probably for 30 of the 40 years is my guess. If, if you're an agency, company, or NGO can provide funding for academically challenging, multidisciplinary, short-term environmental research, then we need your help. Four, and finally, we need to all take responsibility for es &E. When I was a student, the tuition costs, yes, I'm dating myself here, were a few hundred bucks a quarter, and there were no professional fees. Today, students are paying over 20 grand a year just for tuition and fees alone. We need to create a culture of giving where each and every es &E grad donates the endowment. This is the endowment that Arthur Weiner helped create, and so many of you guys remember when that happened. The interest from the endowment, now at just about $800,000, is just not enough to provide the financial support to attract the caliber of students that we want as DEMVs. We all want the s &E program to be the best applied environmental doctoral program in the country, and we can't get there without everybody's help. And I'm very happy to announce that already one of our graduates, Bob Schofield, donated tonight five grand just to get the process going. So it doesn't... So the good news is we're in the right place, in a place that we can all call home and feel great about. And obviously from the turnout tonight, a lot of people really want to get the networking back and going. And all we're talking about are cultural is just stay involved, provide support, and believe me, it's going to all come back to you. And I know we couldn't make it here tonight, but the current alumni chair, Fred Geringer, I think Betty Yoon, others, are working to really try to get that alumni network up and going. And we're going to try to help as much as possible through the IOES to keep it going. So, anyways, thank you guys so much for coming out here tonight, and the future looks wonderful for the program. Thank you, Mark. We're, we're almost done, but we have one more order of business, and that is to draw the business card to determine the winner of, of five data sticks. Uh, five winners. Turn it up away. Because I didn't tell you this, but I want you to draw. Myrna <laughs> um, has assured me that she's unbiased because, like a good mother, she regards each of you as her favorite. <laughs> At ten cents an hour, these are worth thousands. <laughs> <laughs> It's all the pictures that were on the iPad that nobody looked at. Oh. <laughs> and by the yeah, there's more than 300, and uh, Mike Stenson takes a lot of credit for uh, scanning all of them. Colby Smith.
didn't win, they'll be on the internet. <laughs> sure. Um, I just wanted to, there's one other thing we didn't do, and that is mention the, uh, the person who came the furthest to, see, to be here tonight. That's Tim Downs, who came all the way from Massachusetts. <laughs> Left in the, in the evening, but you don't have to, you don't have to go by that. So please enjoy, enjoy the rest of the, uh, of the time you're here. Um, again, I echo what everybody said that we're just so happy you came. Uh, uh, we were worried a little bit that we wouldn't get the response, and it was just, uh, you know, uh, well, we were going to get the response. Our, 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 all of our expectations. So thank you very much. <laughs>